Hey everybody, Tim and I are on a special mission. It's been snowing off and on all day today. And uh, we decided we would take an excursion to the grocery store for some specific items. Here's the roads. They don't look too bad, but they hadn't scraped them or anything today. I don't guess they really have to. It's pretty light snow. Just over this hill here is the big town that we're going to for the grocery store. I'll try to zoom in. Right, don't blink. <laughs> there it is. There's the big town. So when we get to the grocery store, we'll explain a little more about our mission. Let you see a little bit of our drive into town. You know this has got to be an important mission if we're gonna drive all the way into town. to our friends Mike and Lynette. They live uh, down at the end of the road here and they go for a walk every day, no matter the weather or the temperature. She said today her eyes are watering because it's so cold outside. It's 23, I think. And she said that the uh, wind chill is 19. Er. <laughs> so her eyes are watering so she thinks she's gonna start icing up so they're gonna head back soon. Icicles on your face, that can't feel good. So all the snow we got, the little flurries, didn't stick in the trees at all, just on the ground here. So it's not as pretty as when it sticks in the trees. Some of them put up these little teepees 
over top of their shrubbery and it looks really cute with the little teepees everywhere so hopefully if i remember correctly there's a house right up here hopefully on my side because that's where i'm aiming this camera and uh they have little teepees and so i thought that'd be cool to see it took us a while to figure out what that was and then some people use this orange snow fence and they wrap their bushes and so it's to keep the snow from breaking the branches of the bushes but anyway the little teepees are kind of cute i will say i think if we had to have them we don't have any shrubs up front but if we did i think i'd paint them or make them look like snoopy's house or something but they just have plywood, I think. Maybe I can find it. Oh, yeah, the big farm. What farm is that? Do you know? That's our bedroom farm. Our bedroom farm. We 
found out in the paper we had not heard the official total number of inches of snow that we got last year until today and it was 120 yeah. inches of snow last year and I think the year before that it was 109 so if we're gonna reach those kind of totals it's gonna have to start snowing soon wouldn't hurt my feelings if we didn't reach those totals. <laughs> we'd prefer the record low year of snow versus high
Yeah. She missed him. <laughs> Camera man. I doubt it's seeing as I'm the operator. Now tomorrow is Friday, so in the parking lot beside McDonald's, the fishman comes and he, he comes up from the coast every Friday to our town and he goes to a different town each day. But on Fridays he comes up here and he has fresh fish right off the dock. And sometimes we like to buy fish from him. We get haddock, salmon, scallops, shrimp. Really nice. Very good. Yeah. Food. Sometimes we'll buy extra and vacuum seal it and put it back into the freezer at another time. Our friends yesterday gave us some of perch that they had caught early in the spring and uh, we took it home yesterday, defrosted it and had pan fried perch. And I tell you what, I am a super big fan of that. That was fabulous fish. Very light, flaky, mild fish. Just delicious. There's one of the loaders that they used to clean the parking lot at Walmart. Now, isn't that a monster? <laughs> I'm getting nauseous looking through the camera. I can't imagine <laughs> <laughs> people looking on their phone or TV. <laughs> this is the local Walmart. Yep. And very popular groceries chain here at Hannaford's. All right, here we go. Yep. All right, what you got? Got some powdered sugar. Okay, item one. Go. That is apple, apple pie, pie filling. filling. Both of those. All right. Yep. Blueberry pie filling. Strawberry, Strawberry pie filling. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> okay, so we left the grocery store and we're heading home. And Tim is going to take us past one of the houses that has the teepees in it. And uh, so you'll get to see what in the world I'm talking about when I say teepees. in the snow. Gosh, when's turkey season? April. Oh, man, we won't be able to find them come April. No. But isn't that awesome? A whole, I don't know what you'd call it. Flock or something. Flock of turkeys. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> yeah, if you're in the helmet again, I'm back. We're making, making something new. Okay. okay. So we've got our dough here, something we can work with. And uh, we're going to blend it just a little bit more. And then we're going to cut it into eight sections so that we can make eight little fried packs. 
All right, so there's three main steps. One, we're gonna roll out the little fried pies in seven and a half to eight inch circles. And then we're gonna fill them. Well, I guess there's four steps. And then we're gonna seal them up with a fork on the edges. And then we're gonna fry them. So we will, I think we're pretty good with our dough. I'm gonna leave it over there. Okay. So we've got our dough here, something we can work with. And uh, we're gonna blend it just a little bit more. And then we're gonna cut it into eight sections so that we can make eight little fried pies. So I'm just gonna work with this just a little bit more, get it a little more together. Kinda looks like I need a little more liquid. Probably put too much flour down. We'll see, we'll give it a minute. Let's see if we can get this cut into eight sections. And then we're going to have the most important part. <laughs> so here we go. That's four, five, six, seven, eight. Do you think? One, two, three, four. Yeah, okay. Never done this. I'm a little nervous about doing this on camera. <laughs> See if we can convince this to flatten out to an eight. What'd she say? Seven or eight inch circle. That's going to be mighty thin. Thank you. We're gonna make a circle, evidently. Let's see what we got. Okay. Not really gonna make a circle, evidently. Let's see what we got. Seven and a half, eight inches. Mm -hmm. It's all frayed on the end. Let me see if I can do any better. I almost wonder if you couldn't just flatten it out like that and take a knife and cut square, a square. Yeah, well, I don't need a square. I need a circle. Oh, okay. But we're gonna come back and do our fork right yeah, there. Yeah, that'd be good. So we're gonna we're gonna just go with that. I'll try to do a little better. Maybe I should form it into a ball first, or a circle first, and do it that way. So we're gonna try that. And she said you could just mush it out by hand, but it seems like that takes some doing. So we're gonna get our trusty rolling pin. Tim, what was the favorite desserts your grandmother made? Favorite desserts? Yeah. She used to make strawberry pies just like the restaurant chain Shoney's used to have. Oh, and uh, oh, she was famous for her baking. She <laughs> had cakes at Christmas. Uh, she had pumpkin pies, she had apple pies, cherry pies, and then the, the Shoney strawberry pie. And uh, my grandmother, when we were growing up, we always had homemade biscuits, and we didn't know that the rest of the world didn't eat homemade biscuits. And I remember... I was probably 15 years old 
before we ever bought a can of uh, biscuits from the store. Uh, and I remember I thought it was the neatest thing to be able to smack that thing <laughs> against the counter and pop it open. And, uh, you know, I was blessed enough to have home cooking all the time. I mean, that's all we ate. So we'd go out occasionally to fish camp or, you know, the steakhouse or something. But by and large, we had home-cooked meals on Sunday. It wouldn't be anything for us to have chicken, a huge roast, mashed potatoes, homemade biscuits, green beans, corn, and a lot of the church people would come by and uh, we'd have a big spread on Sunday and I, I can remember there being 20 plus people at the house on Sunday afternoon for uh, Sunday dinner oh. and uh, there would be three or four different desserts, uh, a huge roast beef, roast beast as we called it, <laughs> and uh, you know then the roast beef, we would eat roast beef sandwiches the rest of the week and and so forth, but uh, we're really blessed to have homemade cooking, or home cooking rather, and uh, like I say, uh, when Swanson came out with the TV dinner. Oh, I remember those. About once a month, <laughs> we would have a TV dinner on Saturday night, and the lineup on Saturday night was uh, the local grocery store, Win dixie had let's go to the races. And if you bought groceries that week, you got a little race ticket. And it was horse races on television on oh. Saturday night. And then if your horse won, you got some kind of a little something from the grocery store. That's all right. And then after that, Lawrence Welk came on. And then after that, Adam 12 came on. Horse race. And after that, Emergency came on. And, uh, so that filled up the night on Saturday nights, but we'd have TV dinners once in a while, and we had the swans, and then you'd have turkey stuffing, mashed potatoes, and cranberry sauce. Oh, those nasty green beans. Were they in that one? No, oh, okay. I don't think we had green beans in or that peas. one. Or peas. There were green peas but, in uh, one of them. You know, we had, uh, as a kid, and I know this sounds awful, but we had home cooking so much that we thought a TV dinner was a treat. Oh, yeah. Because... Yeah, all we had was home cooking, which, you know, was wonderful. <laughs> didn't know what we had at the time, like so many other people, and like we have been growing up. But um, And that was scratch-made cooking. That was scratch-made cooking. Yeah, it wasn't like, uh, let's see. Like I say, I was 15 years old before I had a can, uh, Amber, a can Amber. <laughs> biscuit. Uh, you know, we had cornbread, and it was made from the very scratch. <laughs> and uh, one thing about it, These are as soon as you hit the smell. front porch, you could smell These don't look what good. was cooking. <laughs> I don't know how much pie filling we're going to get in that hopefully little pie. Hmm. I'm a little worried about some of these. Okay. Maybe this one will be better. I might have was a little scant on that cutting. Maybe it didn't yeah. have enough. Or a little changey. Changey, yeah, totally. My grandmother made things like field peas and crowder peas and um, oh chicken and dumplings. Talk oh, about yeah. talk about a labor of love. She spread out all the the pastry dumpling stuff and cut it all and then mold it all and the chicken stock and man that was a lot of work. You know that's one thing that we've come to find here where we live. There are some restaurants and some fast food, but there's not a lot. Uh, people actually cook mm -hmm. and eat at home here. And uh, our local Burger King went out of business because it just didn't have enough patrons. So people up here... I think that was the only fast food. Well, McDonald's. McDonald's is still in there. So that's the only fast food. But uh, I've never <laughs> I've never been in a town where a Burger King went out of business <laughs> because they didn't have anybody coming <laughs> to buy and 
those hamburgers. <laughs> but, uh, you know, we eat at home 98% of the time. These are going to be some odd looking <laughs> pies. But I bet they're going to taste just as good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Ugly eats just like good looking. <laughs> It'll be tasty, I hope. I don't know that I've ever seen an ugly frying pan. <laughs> yeah, I saw recipes for fritters, apple fritters. Yeah, some people call them fritters. And they are a little different than this, but um, they were kind of ugly, actually. These at least are like turnovers. See how ugly it is when they <laughs> wrap their lips around it. <laughs> It'll be yummy. You ain't never lied. So this, the reason we're making these is that little guy, Martin, we watch his channel and he is in a, a off -grid, um, an off-grid cabin in Wisconsin. No, he's in an off-grid cabin in Minnesota. Oh, well, I was close. <laughs> and he goes up there and stays sometimes 20 plus days and he drives from Illinois at 600 miles from his house up to the cabin so his wife sends him with goodies a bunch of <laughs> fried pies and uh, i think he has some friends drop by just to see <laughs> if they can have a fried pie <laughs> everybody loves them so he calls them world famous fried pies and i have no doubt <laughs> that his wife makes excellent fried pies uh, she is, or he, whatever, is who inspired us to try this. And of course, we're cheating. We're using canned pie filling. We could be using the real McCoy. I'm going to get an apron on. I just realized I don't have one. Before I get too messy. Martin is just a funny guy. He um, has lots of snow where he's at, just like we do. And he um, does a lot of work out in the snow and clears his little trails. And uh, he doesn't let the snow stop him. No, he doesn't. <laughs> and he has these birds. What are they called? Canada Jays. Canada Jays. And I think... Another name for them is Whiskey Jack, but, um, or Gray Jay. Those things are so tame, they just come and eat off his, out of his hands. He makes pancakes sometimes in that off-grid cabin and they'll eat pancakes, <laughs> uh, bread and so forth. He doesn't give think, them his- I, I was trying to say, I don't think I've ever seen him offer the birds. <laughs> A fried pie or a piece of fried pie. He's smart. Martin's smart. And one of his mentors is a, a guy that we watched on television quite a bit, Red Green. Oh, yeah. The Red Green Show out of Canada. We love that show. We used to watch it a while back. If the women don't find you good looking, at least they should find you handy. <laughs> if you've never seen the Red Green Show, that's a cute little show. everything we watch is old timey though like that the yeah. red green show is an older show and and not particularly with the red green show but you know we like older shows and just good old hearty shows one show we've been watching lately is about montana and that is just the nicest little show do you remember the name of it back roads of montana yeah and put on by the university of montana the host is uh William Marcus, and it goes back to the 90s and, and the 2000s, and I think the latest one that I've seen, the most recent, is 2015. But uh, it highlights the people and events in rural Montana. Let's see, would you open one of these for us? You want to start with apple? Yeah. All right, we're going to try apple. I did wipe it off, but if you can open it up. So what we're supposed to do is take the little circle and mm -hmm. a couple of tablespoons and we're supposed to cut those up so I got this 
serrated knife. And the, the lady on her video made a lot of sense. She says, if you leave the chunks real big and somebody takes a bite and the chunk comes with them, then the rest of their pie is pretty empty. So that sounded pretty sad. <laughs> so if you cut them up, then it's more likely to stay in the pie so that when they take the next bite and the next bite. That makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> I bought store-bought pies, apple pies, and the first two bites would be hollow. Ah. Oh, the little fried pies at the store? Mm-hmm. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, they'd be hollow. All you get crust and a breath of fresh air. <laughs> the, full, the smell of apple. Yeah, you can smell of apple somewhere down there. And also, we so don't want to be skimpy. We're not going to be chinchy. We're going <laughs> to fill these pies up so when you bite into it, it's going to explode all over your face. All right, so all right, this, is, this is all I know to do. So. Looks like you're doing well, a pretty we'll handy see. job so far. <laughs> we shall see. I haven't seen anything so far <laughs> that would deter me from eating one of these pies. Hey, do you mind tasting this and see if like, we need cinnamon <laughs> or anything? I don't even know what that tastes like. Sure, I'll taste it. <laughs> I mean, we might need to put cinnamon on them. It's like giving sure. somebody a credit card. So you mind seeing if this thing works? <laughs> Spend some money. Okay, what do you think? Do we need to doctor them up at all? Cinnamon or sugar or? I think it's fine. Okay, well, good deal. We need a little tiny cup of water, maybe. Okay. So, all right, so we put the filling in there and we pushed it over. Now we're going to try Lord willing to seal it up. <laughs> I might have put too much. Look, it's squeezing out. Oh, shame. It's probably not good. <laughs> That's not good. Okay, so we're supposed to take the water and put it all over the crust. Of course, right now it's got a lot of apple goo on it because I think I overfilled it. Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> So then we're gonna mush this closed. Mush, mush, mush. That looks pretty good. It looks pretty good. And then we're supposed to take our fork and kind of, you know, make a little ring. Uh -huh. And then, okay. So she said that if you leave the edge all flimsy like on the edge, it burns. So she said after you run the fork around, and we'll get Tim to take some up close pictures of the next one, but oh, after yeah. you run the fork around, you kind of cut it off there, and then you won't have burned pie. Sounds good to me. So we are gonna set this guy to the side and uh, we'll get to frying them up later. I'm gonna set this little guy off to the side. Okay, that went okay, I guess. I guess. All right, so here we go again. I'm gonna put some pie filling in there. Try not to get it too much. Whatever too much is, I don't know. Okay. Okay. So then we're gonna get water on our fingertips and we're gonna go around the edges. Okay. And we're gonna fold it shut. And come see this side and then I'm gonna do the fork method and that just pretty much seals it I suppose okay there's the fork method let's see okay so we got that and then we're gonna take the knife and get rid of about half of that. OK. 
Okay. What do you think? I think it looks good. I think it looks good. Yes, and the milk. Mm -hmm. Well, until we do our next batch. Yeah. <laughs> I like the fact you're getting faster at that. Thanks. <laughs> be in the tote to tote them over. Oh, that'd be good. All right, you gotta use that there. Yep. Oh, there's a piece. Yeah. Gosh, watch it all explode out of there when we cook it. finished with these yeah are you gonna make any for yourself <laughs> I need to <laughs> <laughs> surgical right there. so we have three more one is kind of a oops over there so it might be just a little sample of pie but anyway and then we'll heat up our oil and uh, make a stab cook it with some pie I don't know what to do with all this leftover dough Make another pie. Maybe. So this seems to be going pretty well. I don't know, I guess. I don't know until we actually cook them. But it just seems okay. ones I rolled out and they're kind of small. But I uh, bet they taste good. This is our last 
can and it finishes up our can of pie film, so that's pretty good. How long does it take to fix these? Oh, you mean like to fry them over yeah. there? I think just like a couple minutes just oh. to get it just to get it round on the outside. Oh boy, that sounds tasty. Yeah. So probably after this right here, we'll get to frying, well, heating up our grease oil. Whatever. She said that um you should just use like less than oil type stuff instead of like butter to fry it in. I would have thought of butter anyway, but she says the butter will burn as you fry the next one and the next one, so. That's precision, man. Oh yeah, you're doing great. Don't change a thing. little pieces and put some butter and cinnamon on them or something and I hate to throw it away. That's an idea. But anyway, so that's the last one we got. Um, we ran out of pie filling, so we'll stop there. And I'm gonna get us a pan and it'll start warming up our oh, oil. Pretty done. So you wanna you want me to roll in a little Yeah that looks good. Okay, I can do that. We had some good luck today. Um, here in these chilly climates, when the heat's on constantly, it gets rather dry in the house. <laughs> and um, we had a humidifier. Is that gonna stick or I need to wet it? Wet it. Is anything sticking to it? Maybe we fry them and then we put what do you think? Yeah, probably. Okay, we'll do that. Off. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so we'll do that. We'll fry them first. But anyway, we got a Lavoit uh, humidifier last year. Really nice machine. Loved it. It worked great. We got it out this winter because we had cleaned it up, stored it, and it worked for about two weeks. And then the big front display, which is digital, just kind of quit work. So I contacted them. And they were lovely. They told me, don't worry about it. They're going to send me a new one. I did send them a video of me trying to turn on the one that we had. So I proved that, you know, it didn't work. And uh, so our new one arrived today. No coughs, no shipping, no anything to us. And it's in the living room right now doing its job, keeping things moist. And uh, so we're really tickled. That actually worked out really yeah. good. So we're trying to figure out if we do get another kitchen appliance, which we love cooking, so it only really makes sense. There's a deep fryer, so we would, if we had a deep fryer, we would fry these in that. It heats the oil to the correct temperature and keeps it there. It's a little more idiot proof, I guess, <laughs> when you're frying stuff, because if our, if our oil heats up too much, we're gonna burn it. If it's not hot enough, it's just gonna get soggy. So. Anyway, um, so we were thinking about a deep fryer. And a tilt stand mixer. Oh, yeah. The KitchenAid mixer. So we're going to do this. some research to find out, Yeah. you know, the and then, best deals yeah. on them. But, uh, a lot of the bread recipes I'd like to be able to make, like um, pretzels. And, oh, yeah, and the bread maker, too. So. Yeah, well, I don't think we need the bread machine anymore, but I thought that for a few minutes, but... I mostly just need uh, the mixer to mix the dough for me because okay. some of those doughs are so thick, I, I can't do it by hand. Yeah. So you want to try one of these guys? You want to drop him in and see yeah. if some magic so what's happens? What's he supposed to do? I'm guessing he's supposed to sizzle and brown and be happy. He's sitting there looking at me. Yeah, that <laughs> So we'll give it some more time. What did I put it on? Five? Four? Oh, six. Okay. Yeah. We already decided if we make too many of these, which we bought plenty of filling. Um, oh, that's my coffee. I guess it's done. Yeah, you can just leave it in there. 
Um, we'll get it out later. But anyway, we thought we would share them with the neighbors. Um, so hopefully they turn out nice. Hopefully. Share one of them. Our, our, <laughs> our fried pies with the neighbors. Well, howdy, neighbor. <laughs> Alright, we're up past 200. Okay, about three. No, I have no problem sharing with neighbors. After <laughs> I've had a couple of dozen, you can take yeah. one or two. <laughs> you get full. <laughs> you can take them one or two after I've had a couple of dozen. There we go. That's the plan. Yeah. I remember my mother had... That looks open right there. My mother had... I think his mom had a fried daddy back in the day when they mm -hmm. first came mm -hmm. out. And those were nice, but now they're super nice. The fried daddy has just an on button. It doesn't tell you how hot it is or when it's ready or anything. The temperature, nothing. It's just on. So the newer ones that we were looking at the other day had actual thermometer that tells you how hot the oil is and high, medium, low type thing <laughs> so you could more easily regulate it or set a certain temperature and it keeps it there. So those seemed a lot better than the fried daddy. <laughs> I remember there was a restaurant in North Carolina and it was just a, a hamburger joint and people ate there all the time. And somebody asked a guy in the, uh, about the, the fryer that they fixed french fries in. Mm -hmm. So, when's the last time they changed the grease in that thing? They said the day I opened it. Oh. They've been open 20 years. Mm. Sometimes it's better not to ask. <laughs> well, it's just like a mercury on her tongue. It never hurt anybody. No, she didn't hurt anybody. All right, what we're up to now? I guess we should have done this while we were putting them together. I just thought we could only handle one thing at a time. <laughs> they are so pretty. Pretty good to me. Don't? I don't even know. <laughs> I'll let you know in a minute. <laughs> hmm? The pot, the apples aren't really hot. Well. <laughs> that just makes it eatable faster. Yeah. Mm. It's not really that good. You probably won't like it. <laughs> You gotta take it back. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that ain't. That's pretty yummy. Mm -hmm. So, what do you think before I cut the video? Is that a success? Oh, yeah. oh, I can't even see you. There you are. Is that a success? Oh, yeah. 